Multi-factor authentication is the number one way that you can secure your Office 365 environment from a hacker. If you only did one security basic out of the entire stack of Microsoft security, it would be to deploy MFA. It would have the biggest impact in your environment. Um, so why aren't organizations doing it? Microsoft cites out that 26% of organizations globally that use Office 365 have MFA turned on for their users. Only 26%. What's worse is that only 34% of admins globally, global admins, have MFA turned on for their account. And so today I'm going to walk through how we can deploy MFA using conditional access. I'm going to do an overview real quick of what conditional access is and how to take advantage of it. And then we're going to go and deploy out your first MFA policy to secure your global admins and secure your admin accounts. So I hope this video helps. Let's hop into it and let's get to it. So high level, what is conditional access? Well, it is a set of if this, then that conditions. At its most basic, it's like this graphic right here, where as a user is accessing an Office 365 environment, Jira, your VPN or a website, we're basically saying yes or no, they can access our environment. And that's as simple as an answer of what conditional access is. It's a set of policies if, right, an end user has signed in, should they be able to access our Office 365 environment or our Salesforce, something along that line. And so that's what conditional access is. But it gets more important than that because as this utility grows, we can set up grant controls to make the authentication stronger. So the, the most important of the controls that we've talked about or we're gonna talk about is securing and granting access if the end user is using MFA. So as the end user signs in, they're trying to access Office 365, we can send them a grant when they have achieved their MFA prompt. And that's really a really good way to get your environment and secured. It's a simple set of policies. In this case, Isabella is accessing Azure Management and grant access, but require MFA. And that's as simple of a policy as you need to get MFA deployed out to your environment. When this happens, grant access if they MFA. When they're accessing Azure Management, grant access if they're using MFA. And we can build on those set of policies, but that's as simple as you have to go. Conditional access gets us way more than that though, because we're able to take advantage of all sorts of signals from the end user, where they're signing in, the sign in risk of their environment, the device, the location, and take that as account of our sign in process. So if I wanted to, I could come in and say, grant access to Isabella, as long as she MFAs and is coming from her iPhone. Grant access to Isabella if she is MFA'd and coming from a trusted location. Or in this case, block access if they're coming from a risky sign-in. Something about their sign-in risk is uh, risky. And we can take that policy and expand it out. We can take all of those signals and inform our decision-making comp to it. And so when we start looking at some of those advanced conditions, we got a lot of different good stuff that we can take advantage of. So I mentioned device platform. We can target specific device platforms across the board in our environment and say, yeah, because they're accessing from an Android, iOS, or Windows phone, I don't know who still has Windows phone, but grant access in that scenario. Or maybe you don't support Windows Phone or support Android. You can say block access in any of those conditions. So really good power here. I really like all the options that Microsoft gives you. It lets you be very flexible. That's the big takeaway from conditional access is it's a very flexible solution that lets you achieve your MFA when you want in all those set conditions, right? So a simple one would be when an end user is accessing from a trusted location, allow them through without MFA, but if they're accessing from a non-trusted location, you're not your corporate IP address, that's when you wanna MFA them. And so we can do a lot of that type of stuff. We can also filter on device platforms and get really specific about a device that an end user is allowed to access on or excluded from accessing on, right? So we can do that type of thing. So if you wanted to do like a 
privilege access to workstation, well, we can do it with this policy. We can come in and say the end user is blocked from accessing except for from this Lenovo registered device that's managed by M365 in his Azure AD joint, right? So we can get really specific and really granular with our conditional access policies. So that is great from the condition standpoint, but we can also get really granular on our decision-making complex of what they're accessing and how that they're allowed to access it. So we can come in and say, okay, only allow access if they're coming from a compliant device or a compliant app from Intune. We can take advantage of that. We can come in and say, if we discover their credentials leaked on the internet, well, require them to change their password. If we discover that they're signed in and they're a guest and they haven't signed our terms of use agreement before, well, let's have them before they access our environment, sign in and do that. And then we can get even cooler features. We can use conditional or cloud app security and proxy someone's connection and say, you can only access Salesforce if you're blocked from downloading from it. So a lot of cool capabilities that we can do in here. Um, the grant is really where you're gonna spend a lot of the time deciding what sets of access policies you wanna do. And again, there's very cool things. So multi-factor authentication, that's the number one one that you should deploy out. But there is other advanced things that you can do like require the device to be marked as compliant or require a hybrid Azure AD join device. Um, and then for like mobile device, we can require the use of an MDM or an app protection policy as part of the access signs. And so when we start deploying this, we can get really granular with a lot of cool things that we can take advantage of. Eventually your policies might get so advanced that you're gonna build out a set of overlapping policies to cover this condition, this condition, and this condition. And it's important to understand when we start talking about MFA or conditional access and having all of these items available, conditional access is a everything all at once evaluator, right? So there's not like a firewall, firewall priority where it's going down the list one, two, three, four. Conditional access is everything all at once, right? So if I met this policy, I'm going to then require MFA. If I met a block policy, I'm gonna MFA and if I met both a MFA policy and a block policy, it's gonna enforce all of them at the same time, right? So as the end user goes in, they'll be required to MFA to find out that they're blocked. And so what you wanna do is you wanna have some really good planning that goes in place for deploying really complicated rules. Now, we don't need all that. A simple policy will do just fine. We don't have to get super granular with it. And it's really not even uh, always recommended. If you actually deploy the Microsoft Security Baselines, um, it's a very simple set of policies that you can do to deploy it out. So let's go in and do that. Let's deploy out a, your first policy to secure your admin accounts and require them to achieve MFA. All right, so let's deploy our first MFA policy. And to do that, we're gonna to go to portal.azure.com. We're gonna to go to Azure Active Directory. And then on the left-hand side, we're gonna to go to security and conditional access. That's gonna be the place that we're gonna create our first conditional access policies and admin policies. But before we actually turn it on, I want you to actually be extra careful and we're gonna go ahead and register for your MFA with your admin account at this time. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna to go to aka.ms slash MFA setup. And this is where we can set up our MFA. So if you're deploying this out globally in your organization, you may want to send the link to this to have people pre-register ahead of time. In my case, I'm gonna set up the Authenticator, key, uh, Authenticator app option because I like to use my phone for all of that sign-in. Um, and it's, to me, the best option uh, for setting up MFA. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up real quick while we wait and I'm gonna scan a QR code. In this case, it's gonna prompt me and I'm just gonna go ahead and do that iPhone setup in here uh, and away we go. So now I am set for it and I'm just gonna go ahead and approve my prompt just to verify, yes, I am in fact registered for MFA in this environment. Perfect, we are set. So now let's go and create our policy to protect our global admins or just generic admin accounts. So what we need to do is 
first put new policy. We're gonna give it a name. I like to use the bracket and control that I'm gonna do in the first half of this. So as I'm reading a bunch of policies and I'm confused about what they do, it's really easy for me to see, oh, this one does MFA or this one blocks, um, that kind of stuff. And we're gonna call this admin accounts. Next, who are we gonna target for this? We need to target our global admins or generically our admin accounts. So instead of targeting a specific user, let's use directory role. And so we're gonna come into this and target our global administrators. That's the number one role that we really need to secure in our environment. That's, there is always a global administrator that starts out. But a couple of the other ones that you might want to secure are um, some of the other high privileged accounts. You don't have to do them if you don't use them, but I'll, I'll put a list right here on the, the, the left-hand side to say, hey, these are the other high privilege roles that we would wanna do. But like privilege role administrator, the ability to give someone global administrator, that should also be MFA'd. Um, authentication administrator, that should also be MFA'd. Uh, yeah, security administrator, that's a high powered role that should be also MFA'd into an administrator. So you can just go down the list and select the ones that are important to you, the ones that you can secure uh, in your environment. Next, what app are we gonna secure? If for your claims to your global admins, I'm gonna select or suggest that you secure all your cloud accounts. You can get really granular with it and say, oh, just if they're accessing Office 365 or just accessing Salesforce. But as an admin, you really should get uh, MFA'd when you're accessing any of your environment. Okay, simple as that. Conditions. Again, we're gonna do a simple policy here. We don't need to make it complicated. We're not gonna do any conditions in here that make this happen. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna simply come into the grant and say, require multi-factor authentication and we are set. Um, it's important to note that this will turn on and by default turns on in report only mode. We need to switch it over to on. And then by default, Microsoft is trying to make sure that you don't accidentally lock yourself out. And so you'll notice here, it automatically tries to exclude the user you're using. Um, and that's no good. We need my account protected, right? It's just as easy for me to get hacked as an end user as anybody else. So we wanna secure our account by making sure it's a part of the MFA policies. And we're gonna go ahead and hit create, and we are now set. Our first MFA policy is deployed out. I might get kicked out here in a second because I haven't uh, MFA'd yet to my environment, uh, but that's to be expected. As soon as you create this policy and turn it on, you might get a prompt immediately after this and say, well, yeah, you're supposed to be MFA'd. You haven't MFA'd yet, let's go do it. Okay, and that's as simple as you need it to be. All right, so I hope this video uh, helps explain what CA is and how to get started with creating those policies to enforce MFA. So the next step is go and do it. You gotta turn on MFA for your global admin accounts. Still, again, number one way, the number one recommended way to help secure your accounts from, well, uh, you know, from a hacker trying to compromise your 365 environment. Um, I'm gonna cover a couple other topics in other videos, such as building a more robust policy, going and setting up uh, you know, a baseline set of policies to help secure your environment. I'll walk through some of the best practices there, and I'll try to make a couple different videos on achieving different forms of authentication, how to use CA really and make a very robust set of policies. So hope this helps. If there's questions, uh, you know where to put them in the chat. Thanks and have a good one.